Hi, this is Martijn ten Velden. I'm here with Loop TV in Amsterdam. Hi, it's Kat. We're here with Loop TV in sunny Amsterdam, surprisingly, um, with Martin ten Velden. How are you doing? Very good, actually, yeah. Really nice to catch you on home turf, because you're not here very much, by all accounts. Yeah, it's true. The last time I was here was exactly 12 months ago, so it's nice to be here on a nice sunny day. You just moved to Barcelona? Yeah, two and a half months ago. I was living in uh, Dubai before that, and uh, decided to move back to Europe to be closer to the action again. How's the cold getting you? It's getting me, it's getting me. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's been, it's been a very exciting few years for you, obviously. You're sort of a top-ranking Dutch DJ, and, and that's moving even further. Recent collaborations as well. You've, yeah, I know you've been working with sort of Mark Knight from Tool Room. And yeah. everything. Tell us a bit about some of the, your latest collaborations. Well, I have a new collaboration coming up with Mark Knight. We haven't done anything together for several years now. As you know, we've done 20, 30 tracks together in the past, you know, seven, eight years ago. So it's really exciting. We're getting back in the studio next month. Your studio or his? Um, his studio, because we started this one in his studio. So, uh, and my studio is under construction at the moment, so we can't get in there yet. But you're going to invite Loop TV once it's done, aren't you? As soon as it's done, you're welcome, you know. I'm going to have a little nose around. Yeah, I'll make the tea. <laughs> Fantastic, even <laughs> yeah. better. Yeah. Now, I wanted to ask you as well, you obviously, if, if you're building a new studio, you've made some decisions, what you're getting rid of, what you're keeping. Yeah. What, what's, what's new that's going in there this time? Well, to be honest, the studios are getting smaller and smaller, the actual equipment you're using, because now it's all digital. I used to have big keyboards like the big Jupiter 6, the Jupiter 8, MOOC, MS20 with, with leads and everything, but now you get all in the box, so it's all on the computer screen, so it's very small. I have a Power Mac, I have a, a Power Core, I, have a, I use Logic, and that's it, lots and lots and lots of plugins, a UAD card for, for better plugins, better sound quality. So it's, it's mainly digital now, yeah. It is isn't it? Have you kept your old analog kit? Is there ever a time you sort of bust it out to get the, some of those old sounds back in there? Well, to be honest, I've been thinking recently because everything is becoming so small and so digital, it's, it's not tangible anymore. So I'm thinking of getting some big drum pads and just start hitting things again because it becomes a bit too clinical when it's all too digital. It's nice to have some big stuff around, also for the vibe. Nice to have some sort of... It, it, the warmth of an analog sound sometimes adds to a digital track as well oh definitely and also to have live things it gives the tracks more depth okay let, um, let's talk about some of the sort of highlights and key points of 2010 so far for you uh, the first highlight is this ring on my finger which happened in February so that's yeah, the most really? important one you know I've met your wife she's yeah. a rather lovely lady yeah, she definitely is <laughs> yeah. so that's, thank you that's the number one highlight uh, gig wise I think the best gig I had this year was in Bulgaria was uh, with Mark Knight. It was the closing party on Sunny Beach on the Black Sea coast and it was phenomenal. I mean, Bulgaria absolutely rocks. I love you, Bulgaria, you know, that's all I can say. It's one of my favorite countries. We'll be heading to Bulgaria soon, I feel. Yeah, it was just an insane party on the beach. 7.30 in the morning, the whole beach was still completely packed. What an amazing gig. So that was, gig-wise, that was my highlight, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And in terms of your sort of productions this year, what have we got to look forward to over the next few months? Well, I've just got a new track out called Together All Right. It's a vocal version of a track I did last year called Together, and we stuck a vocal over the top, Red Carpet All Right. Um, and that's doing really well. It's actually number one in the bus chart this week because it just came out. So I knew that. I was just about to say it. Yeah. So there's a nice buzz about the track. And after this, um, I need to finish my studio because I just moved to Barcelona. It's going to be finished in a month. And then I'm going to lock myself up in there, throw away the key and get what busy. What about the wife? Oh no, yeah, I'll give her attention too, you know, but <laughs> yeah, it's really important to spend time in the studio because what I find, I've been, you know, touring the world for quite some years, um, you have to keep the balance. Sometimes if you're DJing all the time, you forget that you have to keep going back to the studio because if you have records out, resident DJs start playing your music in clubs, they tell the promoters, oh, you should book this DJ because he has a good track out, and it helps a lot with your booking. So it's really important to keep producing. So, um, and I mean, one of the things that we've talked to a lot of people is about how you sort of manage that time between your time in the studio and producing and to sort of allow yourself collaborations and still jet around the world and see your lovely wife. Yeah, it's hard. I actually have a new technique now where I write down the times I spend in the studio 
I know, it's a bit nerdy, <laughs> but like you know, it. it's a good way to be honest to yourself, to see if you've spent enough hours in the studio, you know, you can say, oh, actually, I didn't work enough, I should step it up a little bit. That's a nice little thing to do, you know? Absolutely. Now, one of the things I know is that you're, you're moving towards new management this year, which yeah. is very exciting. Tell me some of the key things that you're looking for as a manager at, the, at this sort of stage. Well, I am not looking for a manager who is going to tell me what to do. I should think not. No, uh, because that's just not right. A manager has to understand you as, a, as an artist, has to understand where you're coming from. But a manager cannot do everything for you. You have to know where you want to go and you have to collaborate with the manager to put a plan together to make it work. But you cannot ex expect a manager to just grab you and make you successful if you don't have a plan yourself. So you really have to know what you want. That's why I waited a while before getting new management so I can figure out for myself where do I want to go? What do I want to do? Because then you can work together to get there. It's very important. Now, we were talking earlier about everything going digital and everything yeah. everything has gone, you know, and we've moved out of the area of vinyl and mixtapes and yeah. the internet has changed everything distribution-wise and promotion-wise. What, what do you think of the sort of positive outcomes of that? I'll ask you about the negatives in a minute. Yeah, yeah. No, the positive is especially for new people who don't have the budget to pay for a studio, don't have the budget to pay for mastering or distribution. Uh, to press the vinyl up if they want to start their own label it's very easy because they can just do it digital with hardly any initial costs so that's a big positive for people who want to start out now i also wanted to talk to you about the obvious negatives of in, of distribution as it is nowadays in digital distribution yeah. piracy and everything else do you think the onus is on the artists to now sort of find new revenue streams new ways of making money or do you think there should be a greater clampdown on those who do pirate sort of material well i think both is already happening um, a lot of djs and artists are using the internet a lot more a lot more multimedia a lot of djs are doing little clips of their tours so people can get more involved and if you cl feel close to the artist and it's it's all about performing live as well i think it's the same in the um, bands you know big concerts people like madonna even they have to start touring again because sales are down so you got to tour and make your money more that way as well. And a lot of the time your releases are more of a promotional tool almost to get the gigs. It's been lovely talking to you. Uh, you too. Thanks for spending some time. This My is Cat for Loop TV with Martin Tembelden.